Hey folks, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. You find me in the exotic location of High Wycombe, where I'm uh, en route to the airfield, because it's uh, high time. I did another one of my uh, bike fly bike videos. So if you want to come flying, stick around and stay tuned. All right, it's good to be back on the big old Beamer. I haven't really uh, ridden her, I think, other than maybe one other occasion since I got back from my big Arctic Circle trip. So uh, it's really nice to be back on her and feel the familiarity that she has. The big old wide handlebars, comfy seat, just such a great bike. Anyway, as you can see, it's uh, a lovely day. It's uh, 22 degrees according to the sat-nav, so just a perfect day for riding and also a perfect day for flying. Now, a few months ago I posted a uh, video of me doing some currency flying uh, it was uh, titled something like uh, Ride, Fly, Ride and uh, I was a little bit dubious about posting that because of course this is a motorcycle channel uh, and I post motorcycle videos but I got quite a lot of uh, positive comments and quite a lot of people said that they'd like to see more flying videos so if you're not at all interested in flying and aeroplanes then you probably want to skip this one move on, stop watching the video now normal service will be resumed next time thanks very much for watching however if you are interested in uh, in flying, then stick around, because uh, I'm on my way to the airfield that I'm based at, which is White Waltham, near Maidenhead in Berkshire. What is going on here? Look, a little merry-go-round. Well, hopefully the aeroplane I fly will be uh, available and uh, serviceable. There's always a lot of planets that have to align when you're in the private flying game. Not least the weather has to be perfect in terms of wind, visibility, lack of precipitation, you need to have enough light, etc. You've got to feel healthy. You can't be ill and go flying, you have to have your wits about you. And of course the aeroplane has to be fully serviceable, at least all the critical items have to be serviceable. So there's a lot that can scupper you even when you get to the airfield. I've been before on a flying trip, I've been, uh, you know, my wife has taken the day off work We've gone to the airfield to have a nice trip somewhere and we've been sat on the end of the runway with the prop turning and still haven't gone because I wasn't happy with something that I found during the pre-flight checks or what have you. Anyway, hopefully that won't happen today. Uh, fingers crossed. We're just going to get up to the airfield. Uh, I'll get the aeroplane ready and then uh, what I want to do this time, instead of doing uh, circuits like I did on the last video, somebody actually asked if I could actually go somewhere and show you what's involved in a typical flight to another destination. So today I'm going to head on down to my favourite uh, southern British Isle, that is the Isle of Wight, and uh, take you on a flight to Bembridge. So see you at the airfield. Hi, hello, so uh, welcome to White Waltham. I'm here in the aeroplane, as you can see, this is my mate Keith's aeroplane that he very kindly lets me fly. It's uh, just your inf interest, it's called a Piper Warrior II, uh, otherwise known as a PA-28, or some people just call all aeroplanes of this type Cherokees. They're wrong, but it, uh, it's sort of colloquially known as a Cherokee, if you like. So anyway, what I've done is the pre-flight checks on the aeroplane. I did. I showed you how to do those on the last uh, on the last flying video I did, so I just thought I wouldn't show you again. I've also uh, done what's called checked out in the operations room, basically just have to sign a bit of uh, paper to say uh, where I'm flying to uh, and at what time. It's uh, I think it's just a legal requirement of flying from the airfield. Uh, you have to do that at all airfields. And then the other thing I've done before I can actually take off is actually plan the route. Um, so what I've done, this is the official um, CAA chart for the UK. So we're up here at White Waltham. Uh, you probably can't see it on the GoPro thing, but uh, this whole bit here is Heathrow. And as you can see, we're halfway underneath Heathrow. So you have to be very careful as you fly around this area. Uh, then I'm going to route down here towards Farnborough and go through the Farnborough overhead all the way over Frencham Great Ponds, which is a, a well-known visual reference point for light aircraft. You can obviously spot it from the air easily. Uh, down over Thorny Island and then to Bembridge, just there on the uh, eastern edge of the Isle of Wight. That's the plan anyway, uh, assuming everything goes well during the flight. So uh, I've got that all planned on the map in the old fashioned way. I've also got it all written down here, again, in the old fashioned way on a piece of paper with timings and so on that I've all worked out beforehand. And then the thing that I actually use during the flight is um, uh, an electronics tool on the iPad, uh, which is my kind of primary flight in-flight tool, if you like. But if that fails or goes wrong for some reason, then I can resort back to map and paper. So I've got uh, plenty of backups if I need it. All right, uh, I think that's it for now. We're pretty much ready to go. I do need to get some fuel. I won't show you how that's done again, because I think I did that on the last video. Uh, next time you see me, uh, hopefully we'll have the aeroplane running and uh, we'll be ready to go. See you in a moment. Okay, folks, so here we are ready to go. The plane is all fueled up. I've done all the uh, pre-flight checks. We've just now got to uh, call the uh, 
little radio station here and get the uh, local airport information. So let's get off the pumps so I'm not blocking anybody. Around this way. While I'm taxiing in the direction of the runway, I'm just checking the compass is working up here, which it is. The direction indicator, which is working down here. I'm just going to tap the brakes as well. They're working. Alrighty. So that's the taxi checks. Bleep. That's my mate Tom. Right, let's give them a shout and uh, just make sure we've got the right airfield information. Welcome Radio, good afternoon, it's Golf India Sierra Delta Bravo for airfield information and radio check. Golf Delta Bravo, welcome, readability 5, the runway is 29 at right hand, QNH 1016. 1016, 29 right hand, Golf Delta Bravo. Right, okay, so basically what they told me there was that the runway that we're using is 29, so that's on a heading of 290 and uh, he gave me a pressure setting to set my altimeter to of a 1016 and that's so that everybody's flying in this area is on the same pressure setting on their altimeter so they're all reading the, you know, a relatively the same height QNH is the uh, pressure setting in relation to sea level in this area when you approach an airfield you'll get uh, what's called a QFE which is the pressure setting in relation to the airfield elevation which obviously is more relevant if you're about to land. You want to know how high the ground is you're about to land on, not how high the sea is, if that makes sense. All right, he also mentioned it was 2-9 with a right-hand circuit, which means we can only turn right once we've taken off. A bit of a nuisance, because really I want to turn left. Anyway, I have to fly one circuit before I depart to the south. OK, I'm at the 2-9 hold board here, so I'm just going to put the engine to 12,000 RPM, pop the brakes on. Now I have to do my power checks just to make sure that the engine is running fine. I'm also going to turn on my nav device, I want to remember, on the iPad. Okie dokie. Right, so on the checklist, although I could do this out of my head, I'm, I always run by the checklist because I don't want to miss anything, obviously. Right, I'll turn the aircraft in the wind, the brakes are on, the throttle is set to 1200 RPM. Yo, I'm going to change the fuel tank, so let's put the fuel pump on. Left tank, fuel pump on, off rather, fuel pressure is remaining steady. Good, oil pressures and temperatures are all green, so they're all running fine. Just make sure there's nothing behind me. I'm going to blow away when I put the bit of power on. Okay, so we're going to go up to 2000 RPM. Okay, just check the brakes are holding, which they are. Car beat, quick blow. And I'm just looking for a little drop of the RPM as I put some heat into the carburetor. We'll talk more about that later. Magnetos, quick check. Left max fine. Right max fine. Vacuum is fine. Suction is good. Engine gauges are all in the green. Alternator output is normal. All pressure is good. Okay, let's just uh, close the throttle, make sure she idles. Which she does at 600 RPM with good oil pressure and then back to 1200. OK, so now we're into the pre takeoff vital actions. The trimmer is set, uh, throttle friction nut is on, mixture is rich, car beat is set to cold, magnetos are both on, primer is locked, flaps can have one. Uh, so one stage of flat for this one. Fuel, we're on the left tank. Fuel pump is on for takeoff. The AI is erect. DI, good. Engine gauges, temperatures and pressures, which we sometimes refer to as T's and P's, they're all good too. Altimeter is set on 1016. Uh, harnesses are good, hatches are secure. Line controls, make sure everything moves. Not catching on my knees or anything like that. All good. OK, that's it. We've completed that. We can take off then if it's all clear to do so. Let's put my checklist in there. OK, happy. Let's go and enjoy the flight then. Let's head south, uh, initially towards Farnborough. So we're definitely on 2.9. Can't hear anyone in the circuit. Brakes off. I'll just make a radio call and people know I'm entering the runway. And Golf Delta Bravo's uh, entering 2.9 and ready for departure. OK, I can see the runway over there. Definitely 2-9, there's no one coming in. There's no air traffic control as such at this uh, this airfield. I can do what I like as long as I tell people what I'm doing. Wind's a little bit from the left, looking at the windsock. Here we go then. Full power. Beat off the brakes. 
Bob right rudder to counteract the uh, torque reaction of the propeller. Airspeed is alive, 40 knots. 50 knots. Lots of right rudder starting to ease back on the stick and up she goes already. And 65 knots, lovely jubbly. Back of the T's and P's, they're all still good. Engine behaving itself at this point, we're doing 200 feet now. And 70 knots in the climb. Put a little bit of trim on. Take the pressure off the yoke. And we can only do right turns, as I mentioned, so we'll do a right-hand circuit before we depart to the south. Penetration is approved. Remain outside of the ATZ. 
Bed and Zesha Probe, Golf Robby X3. And Golf, Golf November Farnborough, whereabouts from the south coast are you going to be rooting today? Right, I'm on Farnborough's frequency. Golf, Sierra, is it golf November Farnborough. Farmer Golf November, go ahead. Golf Golf November, whereabouts from the south coast are you rooting to? So we'll be going to Chelsea Bill and then along to Allentown, Golf November. Right, I'm going to try and get called to Farnborough and ask for a radar service and across their zone. No, Farnborough, Echo Road Hill, we were just leaving off the boat, but we're official. Traffic around me, Roger, Squawk 7010, Freak or Fair Oaks, 123, decimal 430. Bye bye. 7010, 123, 430, thanks, bye. Farnborough Radar, good afternoon, Golf India, Sierra Delta Bravo for basic service. Uh, Golf India, Sierra Delta Bravo, Farnborough Radar, passes it us. Golf India Sierra Delta Bravo, PA28 from White Waltham to Bembridge, uh, just airborne to the south of the ATZ. Uh, climbing to 2,200 feet, 1016. Uh, I'd like to route through your overhead then onto French and Ponce, please, and request uh, basic service. Golf Delta Bravo, Roger. Ask Hawk 0430, basic service. Farm QH is 1016. 0430 for basic service and 1016, Golf Delta Bravo. And Golf Golf November, Farnbury. You are uh, well outside my coverage area there. So it's Hawk 7000, just three quarters of London information. 124.6, bye bye. What's up, the Golf November? Hey, firm, sir, yeah, you're about 10 miles south of my coverage area now over the Isle of Wight. Squawk 7000, it's just London information, 124.6, bye bye. Squawk 7000, and uh, we'll call you back later, Golf November, on the return. Hey, firm, sir. Right, I'm just radar, dialing in 0430 into my transponder here. Golf, Whiskey Whiskey Alpha Lima, Farm Radar, good afternoon, past your details. Uh, Golf Whiskey Whiskey Alpha Lima, currently, uh, sorry, uh, BA-28, Arrow Retractable. Just turned him down a bit so you can hear me. So what I've done now, I spoke to Farnborough, told them what we're doing, and uh, he's given me a code to put into my transponder down here, 0430, that appears on his radar, so he can see that that's me, so if he needs to talk to me, he knows it's Golf Delta Bravo, when he sees a 0430 on his radar screen. And the next thing we've got to do, I can see Farnborough ahead, I just want to make sure I'm cleared across his ATZ, so that's the next radio call. Golf Delta Bravo, Farnborough, Transit of Farnborough Overhead is approved. Transit uh, Overhead approved, thanks very much, Golf Delta Bravo. In fact, he was well on the ball, he called me there to tell me it was approved before I had a chance to call him, so that's a great service. So I can see uh, Farnborough ahead of me now, right at 2,200 feet, which is what he's expecting. So I'll just hold everything here and all should be well. Right, we'll just do a quick in-flight uh, checklist, which is called a free to check. So it's uh, fuel, fuel pump can come off. Radio, we're on uh, Farnborough, that's fine. Engine T's and P's are in the green. D for DI is uh, set and active and altimeter 1016, somewhere at 2200. So that's good. And uh, then I'm just going to give the car beat a blow. I mentioned this before, the engines in these aircraft are very simple, they're not fuel injected, it has a carburetor. And you don't want any ice accreting around the uh, carb jets, obviously, and that would be bad news when you've got one engine. So I blow hot, engine, hot air out of the engine onto the carburetor, the jets. Or around the car, we're at a Golf Alpha Lima Farnbury area to make Farnbury sure I've cleared of any ice, and I do that every now and then. Roger that, uh, Golf Alpha Lima. There we go. Right, so it's all looking good. The visibility is lovely today. Clouds a little bit dark now, but it's uh, high enough to not be a problem for us. There's not too much wind, and we're just coming up to Farnbury. I'll get the zip on to show you that from with the GoPro session. That's the view out the front look. I'm hoping you can see Farnborough Airfield just down there with the white hangers. And then if I show you the instrumentation here, you can see we're at, uh, well, just above 2,200 now. This is the altimeter look. And our heading is roughly south here, look. That's what's going on there. And this is the uh, nav system that I'm using. I'm following the pink line, basically, on there. Bravo, Gold, fixed in November, placed in third. That's the comms radio, shows we're talking on 12525, which is the farmer frequency. And this here is the transponder, shows we're squawking 0430. Does that all make sense? For and Petersfield, and then down to the coast. Current altitude is 1,300 feet, heading 180 degrees, and basic service. Golf Beach November, Roger, and uh, Squawk 0452, basic service, London q and is 1016. That's all looking good, T's and B's are good, number below for the car beat. q and is 1016, Golf Bravo, Golf Basically, I'll just turn it down a bit. 
basically the flight continues like this now until I get nearer the Isle of Wight and I change to the Isle of Wight and talk to those guys at Membridge if I can race them if they're there today. So, uh, probably not a lot more to talk to you about. I'll just keep my half in here on the radio in case he calls me. Just about to go for Farmer now. I'll uh, speak to you again in about well, probably 20 minutes flying time when we get in nearer to Membridge, all right? Okay then, just give you a quick update on the flight then. About, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes have elapsed since I last spoke to you. So we're making good progress heading down to the south. I can see the Solent now ahead of me and I can see the Isle of Wight very clearly. Uh, I'm just uh, coming up sort of a beam Petersfield. I can see over there, I'm keeping half an ear on the uh, radio as well, by the way, which is why oh, I may seem slightly distracted. Because any time now, Armour will probably say cheerio to us and then we'll change to... Uh, to Bembridge, which will be our next frequency. I'm just keeping a lookout because there's an aircraft just passing left to right. We're flying what's called VFR, visual flight rules, which means uh, basically I'm responsible for not hitting other aircraft by looking out, seeing and avoiding aircraft. As opposed to what commercial aircraft do when they're in controlled airspace, they fly what's called IFR, instrument flight rules, uh, and they have a higher grade of radar service. That means that they keep them separated from other aircraft. So I'm keeping my head on a swivel, keeping a good lookout. I can see a shower over to the uh, west actually, isolated so it won't be a problem for me if it moves into our area we can uh, just fly around it. Possibly would be an, a, a problem if I was flying down if the day, say, with my wife on a day trip. I'm just doing this for fun. I mean, I'm just going to land at Bembridge, pay my landing fee, and then basically fly home again. So, uh, so hopefully that's not going to be a problem, and the weather's not going to change hugely in the time that I'm on the deck down there. All right, so uh, according to the nav system, I've got 13 miles to Thorny Island. We're going to be on the deck in about 10-15 uh, minutes, I guess. Amazing visibility up here today. It's a shame that I can't, I don't have another camera to show you the, uh, the view all the time. But presumably you can see behind me the size of this great viz today. Even though we've got this low cloud, it's much better than uh, of late. I actually flew a couple of days ago. Came down on a similar route and landed over at Leon Solent. And it was much more claggy, it's much clearer now. Indicating perhaps some low pressure systems moving through and clearing the clag. Oh, it's a real privilege to be able to fly. There's a lot about flying that uh, is similar to motorcycling in many ways, in that uh, you know, you're part of the environment. Up here, there's no, in this aeroplane, it's a very simple aeroplane, there's no electronic assistance or hydraulic assistance with the controls. I can feel every gust of wind through the yoke. I can feel what the atmosphere is doing around me. And of course, because I've got control in three dimensions, a bit like a bike, well, two dimensions on a bike. Yeah, this great sense of freedom, and of course, looking around me here, even though I'm in the cluttered old south of England, look, it's just me, or apparently, just me up here. Although I know from listening to the radio, there's plenty of others up here, which is why I'm keeping a good lookout. Right, I think I'll give uh, Farber a call, see if they want to ditch me, because they're quite busy. I'll be one less problem for them then, because I'm way out of their way now. Let's give them a call. Farmer right off from Golf Delta Bravo. Golf Delta Bravo. And uh, I'm now uh, just uh, south of Beam Petersfield. Uh, do you want me to squawk 7000? Golf Delta Bravo, Roger. Uh, squawk 7000, three call on route. Bye bye. Three call on route, squawk 7000. Thanks for much for your help, Golf Delta Bravo. Right, so I said cheerio to Farnborough. Basically, the idea is you don't change frequencies without saying goodbye to the one that you were previously on, because otherwise they might call you and can't raise you and then raise the alarm because they think you've crashed. So you always make sure that you uh, get word back to the station you've left. Right, let's change now to Bembridge. We're on 12325. Be much quieter there. I'm also just giving the Carby another blow because we haven't done that for a while. And I can see now Thorny Island ahead of me. I'm going to start to climb a bit. I'm not in any uh, danger of busting any airspace because I want to actually go over the water, the Solent here, at about 3,000 feet, just to give me a fighting chance glide-wise for if the engine did uh, quit, I would have a chance of at least maybe gliding to one of the beaches either on the Isle of Wight or back at uh, on the Portsmouth side. 
when you're flying, you always have to think about these sort of scenarios, although it sounds a bit hair-raising. Always in the back of your mind is what you're going to do if there's suddenly a problem. If the engine did quit, by the way, I know that the wind today is coming roughly from the west, so I'd have to land into wind, so I'd land in that direction. I'd look for a field around here that looked uh, nice and large in a westerly direction and basically try and land in a field. In an aircraft like this, you stand a good chance of putting it down if you find a decent field and land into wind. You might bend and break the aeroplane, but um, if you can basically do a controlled landing as opposed to a crash landing, even though you might bend the aeroplane, you stand a good chance of surviving it yourself. So, anyway, let's change the subject. All right, well, I've got a good view of the Isle of Wight now. I'll move the other camera. Let's see if I can show you out the window. I'll show you what I'm looking at. There you go, that's what I'm looking at. And uh, we've got Thorny Island directly ahead, then some water, and then the uh, western tip of the Isle of Wight, and Bembridge is on that western tip, so I'm basically aiming for that at about 3,000 feet. So if I come back down and show you, look, we're now at 3,000 feet on the altimeter. I'm now squawking 7,000, which is a generic call that just uh, shows 7,000 on any radar screen around here that shows I'm not talking to anyone that has a radar, it's just a conspicuity code. Um, and up here you can see I'm on 12325 on the comp now, which is the radio frequency for Bembridge, which I'm going to give a call when I get to about the coast. All right, and I can see uh, one aircraft down here below me. He's going into Goodwood, is my guess. You probably can't see him on the GoPro. I'm pointing at him, but he's just going through a gap there at the moment, so I'm just keeping an eye on him. And also, even a good look out generally, just for any other aircraft out to my left where I'm pointing the GoPro session at the moment. That's looking towards uh, Brighton and Goodwood. And in fact, I can see down there, there's a lot of white buildings. That's where Goodwood, um, not the Festival of Speed, but the Goodwood Revival is taking place this weekend. So it looks like they're getting ready for that. All right, let's put you back on the chair. Just hoping these uh, batteries are gonna last now for the remainder of the flight. Um, which isn't too far now. Okay, we've got a good height now to cross the Solon. Can't hear anyone at Bembridge, but I'm going to give them a call anyway. See if I can raise anyone. Just check I've got the right frequency, 12325. Bembridge Radio, Gulf, India, Sierra, Delta, Bravo. Nothing heard, let's try one more time. Bembridge Radio, Golf, India, Sierra, Delta, Bravo. Right, they're normally only active on the radios at weekends, and this is uh, a weekday that I'm flying down here, so... What I'll do, just in case there are any other aircraft flying in, they'll be on the same frequency and listening out, so I'm going to make some blind radio calls as I go in, letting people know what I'm doing. They've got a runway 30 and 12 there, so given their wind was 30, uh, zero at eight knots at Farnborough. I'm assuming runway three zero is the one to use, so I'm going to come in by the sea, do a right hand turn, and on to runway three zero if I don't hear anything different from any other aircraft. So I'm just going to make a blind call now, let other aircraft in the area know what I'm doing. Bembridge traffic, Gulf India Sierra Delta Bravo to PA28 inbound to Bembridge, currently coasting out at Thornbury at uh, Thorny Island, I should say, 2, uh, 3,200 feet on one zero. One five, and I'm going to be positioning for a right base for runway three zero. Right, so I've just just told people what I'm doing in case anyone's listening out. I can't hear anyone else on frequency. I'm probably just talking to myself, but you never know. Right, out to the uh, east, it looks nice and blue and clear. Out to the west, it's looking a bit grim, so I'm not going to hang around on the Isle of Wight. It's not a day to go sightseeing. Okay, now I've got a bit of a dilemma here as you cross the Solon because pretty much as soon as I cross, we're pretty much at Bembridge, so I'll have a load of height to to lose. So what I'll start to do is descend when I'm sort of mid Solon. So I'm at 3,200 feet at the moment, and uh, I'll start to descend a bit more seriously. Put the car beat on as we go down. When I'm about halfway over the Solon, it seems sensible. Now I've got a great view of. Uh, Portsmouth over there. I'll try with this camera, probably can't see it, but Portsmouth is over there.
probably can't see the Spinnaker Tower. I can see it clearly, but the uh, wide-angle lens on the GoPro probably doesn't help. But you can probably see the ferry going out, or the liner, and uh, yeah, Portsmouth down there. Right. Pop you back again. Right, what I'm going to do is my um, sort of approach check, so they're getting those out of the way. We All those um, bump fitch checks, just a little mnemonic to remember it by, so it's uh, brakes are off, undercarriage is fixed, mixture is rich, flaps are up, fuel is on the right tank, we've got good fuel pressure, indicators, T's and P's are in the green, car beat can come off, and just harness is secure. Okay, that's my uh, approach checks complete. Those ones that you do in flight, you commit those to memory, hence the mnemonic bump fitch as I used there. And earlier we did what was called a Frieda check, which is a, a flight that you, uh, a check that you do periodically through any longer cross-country flight. We'll probably do another one of those on the way back. Or two. Okay, so we're crossing the Solent now, and I'm just stumping my descent slightly. Whilst at the same time looking for Membridge Airfield. Got some crackle on the road, yeah, which is not helping. When I get the uh, field in sight, I shall make another blind call and let any uh, in-area traffic know that I'm uh, positioning right base for runway 30. Having a little look behind me to see if the weather's developing back at home. Looking all right. OK, I'm light. Nicely at 90 degrees to the uh, runway 30 now. Tell that by my little iPad set up here, showing me that. I'm coming down to 2,500 feet now. Now, Bembridge is at uh, elevation 53 feet, and I have a circuit of 1,000 feet on the QFE. So let's set the QFE, which was um, last one I had was 1011. Might be a little bit different here, but it won't be far different, just to give me a bit of an indication. Given it doesn't sound like there's anybody on the deck that will give me an actual QFE. Just making a bit of a guess there based on what it was earlier. Actually, given the elevation is only 53 feet, which is only 50 feet above sea level, I might as well set leave the QNH set. It's only 50 feet different. It was 1015, the last one we had from Farnborough. Keep things simple. Okay, bringing the power back a bit more now. You can actually see the runway at Bembridge now. Just uh, show you what we can see out the side. So uh, that's the view I'm looking at out the front. You can see the cliffs at the side of Bembridge, maybe. And then if we look out to the right of the aircraft, out west, you can see a couple of World War II forts look in the middle of the Solent, and some ferry action going off out of, uh, out of Portsmouth there. Beautiful, lovely spot. All right, let's put you back there. Okay, you're going to have to concentrate now on the landing situation. I can see the runway that I want. I'm on the right base for 3-0. Got the car beat on, losing some heights. I want to get down to about uh, 700 feet by the time I'm turning for my final approach. Let's make another blind call. Bembridge traffic, Gulf Delta Bravo, inbound to uh, Bembridge. Currently positioning right base for runway 3-0. Okay, we're coming up to 1,200 feet above sea level now. Now the critical bit with landing is uh, to get the speed right. Now in this aeroplane you want to be uh, on the final approach at about 70, 72 knots, something like that. So I'm going to try and nail that and touch down speed around about 60, 65. The difficulty with coming in on this runway at Bembridge is there's some trees and a caravan site just on the approach. And uh, sometimes you get some weird wind effects off there, so it can be a bit bumpy landing this way, but there's not a lot of wind today, so I'm not expecting that, but uh, I'm braced for it just in case I've been here enough to know that can happen. OK, we're at 800 feet now, so I'm bringing the power up a little bit, just to keep level at 800. So that when I turn onto my final approach, I've got plenty of uh, visibility still of the runway, and I can... Uh, Blow it down nicely. Now I can't deploy any flaps in here unless I'm under 105 knots. There's a little white arc on the um, speedometer, for want of a better word, the airspeed indicator here. Yeah, I'm doing uh, about 95 knots at the moment. I'm in the white arc, so it's safe for me to deploy flaps if I want to. In fact, I will start to bring in one stage of flap now, bring the power back a bit more. That allows me to fly a little bit slower, but with the same amount of lift. 
going to have up to three stages of flaps on this aeroplane. The third stage is really just for drag, so uh, you put that on on the end of the final approach, really just to slow you down as much as possible. OK, nice uh, view of the runway there. The uh, speed's back at 90 knots, which is going to fine at this time. Bring the throttle back a bit more, one more stage of flaps, slow down a bit more, which gives me a bit of a trim change. So I'm putting in a bit of elevator trim, so I'm not fighting the yoke. OK, now we're at 80 knots on the final approach. Just to make a blind call. Bembridge traffic, Golf Delta Bravo's turning final, 3-0. OK, looking at the windsock, looks like the wind is indeed pretty much down the wrong way, maybe slightly to the left. And the wrong way is ahead. OK, we're nice and steady at 75 knots. And I actually control my height bizarrely on the final approach by using power, not uh, pitch. Sorry, the height is controlled by uh, throttle and... Uh, pitch control speed, which is maybe opposite to what you might think. And memory traffic, Golf Delta Bravo's final for landing, 3-0. OK, we can slow it down some more. We're at 300 feet now. Nice speed, 75 knots on the nose. There's the trees that I want to be a bit careful about. A little bit of right rudder required because we're coming in a little cramped. Good, 75 knots. The caravan site to my right. That's runway 30. All the flaps now. A few of the bumps off the trees I was expecting. 70 knots on the nose. And we go. Right, killing all the power now. We're at idle, rounding out. Okay, holding off the runway. We go, wow. <laughs> Been a little bit sideways there due to that crosswind, but all is well. Okay, apps and go away. Our beats off. Not to apply some brake. Brakes on these aircraft are never that good, you don't need to use them that much. What I'll do is just backtrack. And beverage traffic, Golf Delta Bravo, sir, backtracking 3 0. They are, welcome to the Isle of Wight. Backtracking now, let me show you what it looks like here. Here we are, just coming down the runway. And then there's a little taxiway just off on the left that we're going to take that we can go and uh, park up. Although I'm pretty much going to just uh, duck down, fill in some forms and then leave home again. Pop your back, man. Looking at the windsock now, it's actually straight across the runway and straight out, so it's uh, got a bit of a gust there at the end, which is why I came in a little bit sideways, but uh, all was well. Right, so taxiing here, to control the aeroplane you actually steer with your feet. So look, I'm off the, off the yoke, if I want to go right, I'm doing that with my feet, and then back left, look, with my feet. So that's something that's quite hard to get used to when you're used to driving a car. Now it works in aeroplanes. Right, I'm just going to taxi over there and park up, shut the aeroplane down, and then I'm going to go and uh, pay a landing fee over there, which is about 10 quid, something like that, 10, 15 quid. And then that's the end of that, uh, that particular flight. Right, I'm not going to be a very long, so I'll just stick it next to this Cessna here. OK, brakes can come on, set the throttle back to 1200, and then to uh, I'll just turn off the electrics. Right, speak to you in a moment, mixture. Splendid, there we go, so that's all there is to that. The time is uh, quarter past three, got to note that on my log. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. I hope that was uh, some of interest to you. Um, I think that's, that's basically 
pretty much how, how every uh, flight happens in light aircraft. I won't show you the flight back because it's just basically the same but in reverse. But uh, I hope that's been of some interest to you. And uh, maybe if it has, let me know in the comments below and perhaps we'll do some more flying another day on the channel. Anyway, that's it for this time. And uh, look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Missing and Fly. Cheerio.